sleep and I was hurt, but you'd be by my side. If it was time to put it up, you'd be down to ride. I'd be out, it's chillin' dry. I make some questions to find out how you feel inside. To find your asses, I flip burgers and Burger King. Would you be ashamed to take friends? You feel me? In the bed, if I use my tongue, would you like that? If I move to your love? Good evening, I'm Kevin Francis with updates at 7. A road safety campaign has been launched to curb accidents involving P-hailing riders who accounted for two-thirds of the 2,576 motorcyclists killed in the nine months of the MCO last year. Transport Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong said studies by the Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research showed that 70% of P-hailing riders adopted risky practices at peak hours including stopping in yellow boxes, jumping the red light, and using mobile phones while riding. Deputy Education Minister Muslimin Yahya has confirmed that teachers who are at high risk for being included in the National COVID-19 Immunization Program. He said priority will be given to about 55,000 teachers classified as high risk and age in the second phase. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries is committed to rejuvenate the agriculture sector by increasing the involvement of the younger generation in its programs. Second Deputy Minister, Dr. Che Abdullah Matnawi said, for this year, the Ministry has allocated 15 million ringgit through the Young Agropreneur Grant Program. Legislation punishing repeat domestic violence offenders, ruling that penalties and the protections for victims were insufficient. The court ordered lawmakers to make amendments to the criminal code as well as establish a compensatory mechanism for domestic violence victims until the revised legislation comes into force. The Philippine Armed Forces said it is investigating a report that Chinese military boats pursued a civilian vessel carrying Filipino journalists in the disputed South China Sea. The television crew from Philippine broadcaster ABS-CBN was travelling to Second Thomas Shoal in the contested Spratly Islands on Thursday when the vessel was allegedly chased by a Chinese Coast Guard boat and two attack craft. Sri Lanka has lodged a claim for $17.38 million with the Greek owners of an oil tanker that caught fire and left a spill stretching 40 kilometers off the South Asian island. The new diamond vessel was travelling from Kuwait to India with 270,000 tonnes of crude oil on board in September when a fire broke out as it passed Sri Lanka's east coast. Moving on to sports now and football, Sabah FC has denied that it has not been paying its players and management personnel salaries for the past three months as viraled on social media yesterday. Sabah FC CEO Carol Ferdows Akbar conceded that the issue of late salary payment did occur but said it had never exceeded a month's salary, adding that the matter has now been resolved. National 100m sprint record holder Kairul Hafiz Jantan has decided not to participate in the Blue Ribbon event at the Malaysia Open GP Athletics Tournament, which kicks off tomorrow. The 2017 SEA Games gold medalist, who is known by the nickname the Speedy Jantan, has instead opted to take part in the 400m event at the two-day tournament set to be held at the National Sports Council Mini Stadium in Bukit Jalil, Kuala Lumpur. And finally, a British sports chief said they would accept the introduction of coronavirus vaccine passports if they enable the return of capacity crowds as quickly as possible. And that concludes the news updates for this hour. Stay tuned for another set of brief updates coming up at the top of 8. Right now, it's back to the evening team on tracks. Thank <laughs> you.